All right, let's go back to creationism versus evolution. The fossils. We're on the summary of the fossils. Yay. Okay. So we want to go to K35.htm. Boom. Summary, ray fossils. Just summarizing all this stuff, we've done several segments on this. And the fossil uh, stratic str rock strata doesn't appear in real life like it does in the textbooks, hardly ever. And it repeats itself, so it contradicts itself many times. <clears throat> so the principle of uniformitarianism is refuted. It's utterly inadequate to account for, by far, the, the greater part of the geologic f phenomena. The most important geologic process seas are those of erosion, deposition, glaciation, diastrophism, which is crust deformations such as caused by earthquakes and other earth movements forming continents, ocean basins, plateaus, mountains, and so on, and volcanism. Each of these important processes, without exception, must at some time or times in the geologic past have acted with tremendously greater intensity than anything measured today. So much for the uniformitarianism. We went over this, now let's go on down. Where we left off, the most important geologic process is therefore sedimentation, but catastrophic, including both erosion and deposition, but catastrophic. The very basis of historical geology is the supposed sequence of the sedimentary rocks and their contained fossils. But the historical geology doesn't re uh, match up with the reality. Erosion and deposition of, are, of course, very important present-day geomorphic processes, but once again, the study of the sedimentary rocks reveals that the sedimentary processes of the past must have been quantitatively and qualitatively different from those of the present. The outstanding erosional feature of the past is the peneplain. The outstanding depositional feature is the geosyncline. Neither of these has any true modern counterpart nor has any satisfactory theory of the development have either been devised. The same is true of most other sedimentary features. A special significance is the fact that modern sedimentary environments can rarely, if at all, be identified in the sedimentary rocks. Only very rough classifications can be made, such as marine or deltaic or something like that. Fossil deposits are still harder to account for on the basis of uniformity. uniformity. They come kind of catastrophically, and the condition is nearly always for the burial and preservation of fossils, which is instantaneous. Present-day processes are very are forming very potential, few potential, few potential fossil deposits, because the fossils, the dead animals and plants, will deteriorate by the time that happens, and most of these are under conditions of rapid, sudden burial, which are abnormal. Nothing comparable to the tremendous fossil fossil for us beds of fish, mammals, reptiles, and so on that are found in many places around the world is being formed today. Nothing. So it has to be something different, but they won't admit it. Yet it is the fossils which are the basis of the so-called historical geology and the supposed geologic time scale. Hmm. It is the fossils which are considered to be the one sure proof of organic evolution regardless of how they came to be buried. Nevertheless, uniformitarianism or uniformity Modern processes cannot legitimately be account for these fossil deposits. You look up, refute it. Look down at the textbook, oh, it's different. The fossils and their presumed without evidence evolutionary sequence therefore provide the sole basis for evolutionists' concept of the division of the rocks into time units, which have no necessary correlation at all with this stratigraphic relating to the geological study of the source and composition of rock strata, or physiographic units, relating to the study of physical geography. These false presuppositions in the textbooks pertaining to the order of fossils over an imaginary period of time, the so-called geologic timescale, even take precedence over radiometric methods. I've often read accounts of, well, U-235 says this is so many millions of years old. But yeah, it's not according to the geologic timescale, so let's just refute the actual scientific measurements by the U-235 and go back with the textbook, which have been so highly touted, but have often contradict the established geologic timetable. Oh, we go U-235. People say they use carbon dating, but you can't carbon date millions of years. You can only do ten, tens of thousands, if that. 
And we, yet we have seen that not only most, must most of the fossiliferous rocks have been deposited under conditions inconsistent with the principal uniformity, but that the strata as dated by the fossils are filled with numerous anomalies and contradictions that they can't explain unless inventing things. One receives the impression from geological textbooks that the strata are essentially harmonious everywhere, but they're not. With the oldest on the bottom, each stratum succeeded in turn by one representing the next period. <clears throat> of course, this is not so, and everyone familiar with the facts recognizes that it is not so. The geologic time series is built up by hypothetical superposition, position in layers one on top of another, of beds upon each from all over the world. If a pile were to be made by using the greatest thicknesses of sedimentary beds of each geologic age, it would be at least 100 miles high. Since when have you found a sedimentary rock bed that's 100 miles high? It is, of course, impossible to have even a considerable fraction of this at one place at a time. The Grand Canyon, Colorado, for example, is one mile deep. So you go to the Grand Canyon, get to the bottom, and imagine something 100 times bigger. By application of the principle of superposition, lithologic identification, recognition of unconformities and re reference to fossil successions, both the thick and the thin masses are correlated with other beds at other sites. Oh boy, it's a Walt Disney movie. There, thus there is established in detail the stratigraphic succession for all the geologic ages. Tell, you know, believe what I tell you, don't go investigate it, and don't question me. This frank statement by England and Castor makes the method by which the geologic timescale was built up quite plain, since we have already noted that lithographic identification is unimportant in establishing the age of a rock, it is clear the fossil successions constitute the only real basis for this arrangement. And this means, in effect, that organic evolution has been implicitly assumed in assigning chronological pigeonholes to particular rock systems in the fossils. But then when it's out of order, they go back and look at the rocks. But the rocks are no good. Well, look at the fossils. The fossils are no good. <laughs> the geologists utilize the so-called knowledge of organic evolution as they falsely maintain is preserved in a fossil record to identify and correlate the litho geologic rock strata records of ancient time. The succession of fossil organisms as preserved in the rocks is considered as the one convincing proof that evolution has occurred. But even this carefully erected system is found to have numerous contradictions in it. Innumerable. Numerous fossils have been found grossly out of place in the time scale, despite all its self-fulfilling and rationalized safeguards. Furthermore, many creatures supposedly primitive have persisted to the present day they're still alive, including many which apparently skipped all the way from the very early periods to to the present without leaving any traces in the intervening pre periods. It is not at all uncommon for the smaller fossils on which rock identified is commonly based to be found out of place in the expected sequences. Such anomalies are usually explained as one simple, a simple displacement. What about a wave of water coming this way, slamming to another this way, depositing stuff, and then two more waves come and slam in. They have similar material they deposit, but now the second wave deposits are all out of order. <coughs> Drink of water. So, because of their small size, they are easily transported by a variety of geologic and biologic agents and may be displaced either vertically or horizontally from their environments of, of life or from their place of entombment. So, reworking of microfossils have been known has been known for a long time. <coughs> <clears throat> and although the phenomenon is quite common, it need not impair or deter the widespread use of micro-paleontological data in geological interpretations, provided the nature of the phenomena is recognized and understood. In other words, go to Walt Disney, he'll fabricate something for you. <coughs> <coughs> David Day Jones, D Daniel D J. D Jones, Displacement of Microfossils. Now he's trying to explain the anomalies by making up stuff. Being interpreted means that when the fossils are not found in the stratum to which they have been previously assigned, <coughs> by evolutionary theory, it must be assumed that they have somehow been displaced subsequent to their original deposition. The indiscriminating manner in which such agencies of displacement are assumed, a fantasy, 
to act is indicated by the following. Vertical displacement either from older to younger or from younger to older zones may also involve environmental mixing. How about the word environmental fixing? And the rock systems themselves are often found in anomalous relations in the field. So the rocks and the fossils are all kinds of places. All this textbook stuff is completely uh, fictional. It is extremely common to find so-called disconformities, which are those unconformities, strata with missing ages, supposedly caused by erosion during the ages, which have parallel bedding between the early and the recent strata with no outward evidence that the two were not dis deposited successfully. So this is this. They appear to be one right after the other. No, no evidence, no uh, some kind of local disaster, or earthquake, or uh, flood or something. No. They're just clean. Yet, oh, well, they're in the wrong place, so something happened. But these anomalies are more or less trivial compared to the numerous cases in which old formations are found resting conformable on young formations. Uh-oh. Young's supposed to be on top, not on, on the bottom. These phenomena are found almost everywhere in hilly or mountainous regions and have been attributed to thrust faulting. Uh, a couple of crews went down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and found that the bottom rock strata are the wrong age for the ones at the top, at the very top of the canyon. You know, a mile away, millions of years apart. Hey, this should be on top, the other should be in the bottom. What, what is that? The concept, and that's radiometric dating. The concept is that great segments of rock strata have been somehow separated from their roots and made to slide far over adjacent regions without showing a lot of mess. Subsequent erosion then it modifies the transported in that bay, a large mass of strata thrust over other strata. So it, it cleans it up. See, somewhere you went around and cleaned it up. Uh, maybe um, Mr. Clean did that. So that the young strata on top are removed, leaving only the older strata superposed on the stationary young rocks beneath. Hmm. There are various modifications of this concept, but all are equally difficult to conceive mechanically. They have no real mechanical decision there and no evidence of it. As we have seen, many show little or no actual physical evidence of such tremendous and catastrophic movement. You have a thrust of a miles and miles long of, a, of rock strata, and up, and then the lower one, the, the younger one goes underneath, and it's slamming down millions and billions of tons of material. And it's Mr. Clean cleaned it all up, like cleaning the kitchen counter. In the light of such fre frequent flagrant contradictions to the established geologic time sequences, an example of which follows below, in addition to the arbitrary methods and circular reasoning by which the scale itself has been established, and also in addition to the innumerable evidences of catas catastrophe rather than uniformity as the basic principle in the deposition and modification of the geological strata, the writers feel warranted in contending that the date of geology did, do, the dates, the data of geology do not provide valid evidence against the historicity of the universal deluge as recorded in the book of Genesis. That works. It is thus legitimate to attempt a new interpretation of these data which will be in harmony with the biblical account of creation and the flood. So here's your presupposed geologic timetable, presume main divisions and events, evidence, events of geological time. You can take a look at this chart, it's just fiction. But it's what they go with. Lots, 200, 500 million years. More next time.